Welcome to this week's podcast episode. I brought on Michael LaRocco. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. Yes. Give the listeners a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? I live in Florida now, originally from Minnesota. I run a marketing agency helping coaches really get their message out so that way they can help more people. Nice. And what part of Florida are you in? Um, Cape Coral, so Fort Myers now. So right by like Fort Myers Beach in between like Marco Island and Naples. Got it. So yeah, Caribbean (laughs) side, right? Gulf side. Is that not the same thing? I don't think. Okay. I don't think so. Geography. (laughs) But yeah, nice. So maybe you're a little away from the hurricanes? Yes. When they happen. What I love most about your story, we talked previously, but something I believe everyone can relate to because we've all been at that point where we just feel worthless or empty or no direction or, you know, what our environment is teaching us. So I'd love for you to give a background, you know, kind of growing up and your journey and where you were to where you are. Yeah. So growing up, I lived in a really abusive household. I watched my mother get abused physically, emotionally, mentally. The same person would abuse uh, myself and my little brother. And just growing up, I was always kind of told that I wouldn't be anything. I was like the screw up of the family. And I, I guess you could say I was like the ugly duckling. And, you know, I was, I always just felt like that. I always felt like nothing would go right. Um, the only thing that I would like, at first I would just use sports to kind of get away from everything. Like that was my home away from home just because I knew there I was actually safe and I could take, I guess, my anger out on all of the other people in a way that didn't get me in trouble. And then that kind of progressed into, I started fighting people a lot and I started doing drugs and I just was trying to suppress all of the emotions that I was going through. And the person that kind of was doing the abusing, he was a meth addict as well. So I kind of grew up in that whole like drug environment. And I just felt like, you know, that was kind of the escape for everybody. And I felt like, you know, they were doing it. Why couldn't I go and do it? Yeah. Well, and so many people become a product of their environment. Yep. Yeah. And pretty much 18, I dropped out of high school. I had about two years left because I got on probation when I was 16. I was on 90 day probation for two years, which is a little, a little strange. They just kept extending it and extending it. And once I turned 18, they couldn't keep me on like the juvenile system anymore. So that's kind of when I was like, okay, screw this. I dropped out of high school. I started selling cannabis and I just kept doing the same stuff that I was doing and, nothing really seemed like it was going to change. And I felt like because I wasn't a high school graduate, I couldn't accomplish very much in my life. So what was a turning point from you? Honestly, I was trying to think like what really led to it and sad to say that, you know, I honestly think it was Ty Lopez's video of him in his garage with all the books like that I, I don't know what it did but seeing like all of the books that led me to going into Barnes and Noble and for about 2 hours I was searching through all of the books in the book section and I knew that I wanted to do something with business I knew I needed to better my own life so I actually found this book right here um mindset by Carol Dweck And it was just, I just seen like, you know, the new psychology of success and reading through that, that really like the way that she put it, because she used a lot of sports analogies, like with uh, Michael Jordan and all of those people. And that really hit home because I was really good at sports. And I just thought, you know, because I'm not good at anything else, I'm just going to try to bank everything on sports. So my whole environment kind of growing up, I could see how I was put into a fixed mindset because I wasn't really like pushed into doing things that I wasn't good at. I was always told that I was a natural athlete. So thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm naturally good at some things and I'm naturally not good at others. That means I probably can't get good at the things that I'm not good at. And, you know, that book really just rewired my entire mind and how I thought about challenges. 
I've heard of this book multiple times and especially recently, literally this is the second time in only a couple of days. For those who haven't read it, what were some of those mindset shifts for you to make you realize I am capable, I am enough and whatever it was that ignited you to get to where you are? I started looking at all of the challenges that I did have in life. And there were times where I would just completely run from those challenges. And I could understand, you know, that was the fixed mindset that was kind of causing me to do that in the environment that I grew up in that cultivated that fixed mindset. And just seeing the difference between having a fixed mindset and then having a growth mindset, really understanding that you can create a growth mindset with yourself. Like you're not born with it. It's, it's something that you can, it's, it's like a muscle. The more you work on it, the more you see challenges as like something like, like growth, then the more you can put yourself in the way of those challenges and actually use them to grow. And that's kind of what I did since I read the book. <laughs> but it sounds like you made a, one, you made a choice and a decision that you weren't going to be in this fixed, this limited perspective that you had always known. But yep. something, there was something else inside of you that, I mean, for you to take a leap from limitation to expansion, that's a big leap, right? That's a lot of heavy lifting at the gym to get those biceps. So what was your process? My process really was just to do what I always have done and kind of just jump in head first. Um, I knew that, you know, I have failed before and I'm still alive, so it didn't kill me. So it was really just how can I jump into these things? Like, like they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I a hundred percent believe that because I've been in a lot of situations that I probably could have definitely gone the other way, but I am still here and, you know, I, I learned from them and I grew from them and like all the stuff that I have gone through in my past, like being robbed at gunpoint and doing all of these other things, like going out there and actually being successful wasn't like scary to me because I have done a lot of things that have put me in a lot worse positions than going out there and trying to reach a goal. Do you believe, is it something you learned in sports too that gives you that perseverance, that determination to succeed? That champion? A hundred percent. Okay. Yes. A hundred percent. Like, I mean, just going through sports, like you're built for competition and like just, understanding that you know business is competition as well and you have competitors which is the same thing that you would have in sports and I played on a lot of team sports as well um, actually one of my favorite sports I wish I would have played in high school is actually golf and that's just a one person thing unless you have a team of four but just yeah. really being able to like build that team around you that has all of the strengths that you don't have. That's one of the really big things that I learned going through sports as well. And I know that there's a lot of things that I'm not good at. So being able to bring in the right people to, you know, kind of lean on them as a crutch. Well, they lean on me because they're not good at what I'm good at is really big when it comes to like what I'm trying to do. So coming from kind of the sports aspect or background, to have a champion mindset to win and persevere. And what do you believe is, I mean, is it some bullet points or a process you could give us that you believe is your champion mindset? What sets you apart? Honestly, I just, I just try to use like my story. Um, I just try to realize where I have been in my life and what I have gone through. And just tell myself every single day, like, like I have a morning formula that I do that I learned from one of my coaches. And that's going through some affirmations, going through the principles that I live by and just trying to do that future vision of where I want to be. Uh, one other book that really had a huge impact in my life was psycho cybernetics mm -hmm. and just the way that Maxwell Maltz talks about how, 
the imagination of where you want to go. It's like a heat seeking missile. If you can't imagine your end goal and you can't see a clear picture on how to get there, then you're going to struggle to end up reaching it and end up getting to where you want to be. Agreed a hundred percent. And that's what even, I mean, any of the top gurus, if you want to call them that in the industry, they will tell you that visualization I mean, is that that laying foundation to get your old and then it's even speaking as though they're real right now yep. that you've already not that I will someday one day know that you are speaking as though it's a fact right now. Yep. A hundred percent. And I think back to sports, like every time before a game, I would visualize mm. the win and visualize how I was going to be in my position that I was supposed to be in and help take my team to victory. And I think that's another thing that I really got that visualization aspect from. Okay. So then you do the champion mindset. What I hear you saying, a champion mindset for you is your morning routine of the affirmations. You, there were three things you said, affirmations, the visualization, and what? And then principles. What does like that mean? Just, um, it comes from another book, um, Principles by Ray Dalio. <laughs> and I, I just try to take things that I see other successful people doing and see how I can build that into my own routine and just kind of model their process because like what um, Gary Keller says, a big model with big goals equals big success. Mm -hmm. And really it's just like one of my principles is just to always think objectively through every situation and challenge. Because I know if I can think objectively and take all of the emotions out of my thinking, then I'll make a lot more smarter decisions and a lot fewer stupid decisions. And it's just really like understanding that no action that I want to take isn't going to be based on one of those principles that I have. Yeah, that's powerful. So what would you, and normally I ask this as a rapid fire question at the end, but since we're here now, what would you tell your younger self now that you've gotten to where you are? I mean, if you could mentor him, what advice do you give him? Honestly, it would be that you are capable of anything that you set your mind to. And no matter what anybody says about you, good or bad, it really does not matter. All that matters is like, what you believe about yourself because somebody can tell you you are the absolute greatest but then you can get all ignorant about it and like just think that you are better than all of these other people but when in reality like nobody is better than anybody else they just know something different than you might know or believe something a little bit different than you're believing something else you mentioned earlier and and what i love because so many people avoid failure right? It's a, it's a big fear for many, fear of failure, fear of trying. So, hey, guess what? They won't try because then at least they don't fail. You yep. seem like you go, I believe you said that you go head first. You're not afraid of failing. So what have you learned most from things that you go after that you quote failed at? So like I, I, I am terrified of failing, but I am terrified of not succeeding more than I am terrified of failing. Uh, so in reality, like it's still there. Like I still have those thoughts like, you know, what can go wrong? So I like to think about all the things that can go wrong. But right when I make that decision, I know that I've already done the thinking process. So I try to take all of the fear and everything and have that before I make my decision, if that makes sense. So one thing that I say, and I preach it all the time, is you've got to learn to let fear fuel you, not rule you. And I've been able to, only through practice and consistency, and talk about strengthening that muscle, is when I get those butterflies in my stomach, when I'm afraid at feelings of anxiousness or, or failure, whatever it is, I go towards the thing so it no longer has power over me. I still feel it. So having yep. being brave and courageous is still feeling the fear, but still doing it anyway. So how have you embraced this, this fear of failure, but your, your fear of not succeeding is so much stronger. So that's, I mean, you're being pulled to succeed, even though you have the feeling of fear of uh, failure. Yeah. So kind of like you were just talking about like that feeling that's going on. Um, when I do feel like that, like I am scared to do something, 
I look back on where I've had that feeling before. Like, for example, when I go live on Facebook, I still get that fear like, oh crap, like what's going to happen? But then I kind of use that same feeling of times that, you know, I did something great, like going out for a championship hockey game. I still felt that, I guess you could say fear, but I turn that fear into more of like adrenaline and a good feeling. So instead of just feeling it as something negative, I try to feel it as something positive by looking at positive experiences from my past where I still had that same feeling. Yeah. And that's huge that you have the emotional intelligence, the EQ to be able to tap into those winning moments and turn the feelings of anxiety or anxiousness to excitement or the adrenaline, as you said. So that, I mean, that takes practice. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like it, it does not happen overnight. I can tell you that I've been working on this for the past, like probably three years. And it's, it's all about awareness and awareness of yourself, awareness of your emotions and being able to take that step back and look at yourself from a third person perspective. Yeah. Okay, so then question for you. What is a key takeaway you want listeners to get from this conversation? Just really understand that just because your past is horrible, if it has been horrible, does not mean your future cannot be a 180 degree difference. Yes. So how, how does somebody, if they feel they're in a dark cloud right now, how do you give them the advice or... or whatever they need to let them know the sun will come out again. It's really comes down to that future vision, like really sitting down and thinking like taking all of the bad things the way that are happening right now and writing down what you actually want to accomplish in your life and then yeah. reverse engineering that process to get those little stepping stones that you can do today, tomorrow, next week. So that way you can become that future vision of yourself. Okay, so what I hear you saying is it's about, it's your focus. So whatever you focus on expands. If you're focused on yep. the shit, you're going to get more of it. But exactly. you focusing on that future vision and creating it your now reality, that's, that's the difference. Focus. Yeah, I completely believe that happiness is a choice. Yeah. And that's why there's billionaires that are extremely happy and there's billionaires that hate their life. That's why there's people that have nothing that are extremely happy with nothing. And there's people with nothing that absolutely hate their life. And it's all about the perception you bring to the situation. Yeah, that's powerful. Okay, so to wrap up this interview, I have a few rapid fire questions for you. The first one being, what is a quote or motto that you live by? A quote or motto that I live by? Um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. That's definitely a huge one. Yeah. I think that was Henry Ford, right? Yep. Yep. Henry Ford. And, and I think that's the key to all this. It's simplicity. Some people like to make things so complex. It's not. No. <laughs> okay. Second question for you. I know you already named a couple, but what is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? A uh, book that I just got, if you're like into, I guess, copywriting and working on like, like talking and being able to write in a way, um, it's Brilliance Breakthrough. It is a little expensive, but pretty much the whole concept of it is to write and talk so people will never forget you. Mm, that sounds powerful. Yeah, I'm super, I just got it in the mail yesterday, <laughs> so I'm super excited. <laughs> Okay, final question for you. Since you've been able to tap into and embrace the fear and go toward it anyway, what is the next thing that you're reaching for that you have that underlying fear? Definitely speaking on stage. Um, I absolutely want to go up on stage and tell my story and be able to help other people, kind of like I'm doing now, but doing it on a live stage. Yeah. There's just something there that is a little scary. Um, I've done it before when I was 17. I got on stage and at about 10 minutes before I had to get on stage. So they pretty much, it was my drug counselor and he was like, hey, you know, I need somebody from our school to kind of prep the school. And 
I know that you can do it. So I'm going to need you to go up on stage and tell your story. So I kind of, it helped a little bit because I didn't have very much time to think about it, uh-huh. but it was still like one of those, Oh shit moments that it was either like, it, it, it was terrifying, but I still, I still went up there and did it. <laughs> you felt the fear and did it anyway. Exactly. Well, I look forward to seeing you on stage. And thank you for joining me today to share your story. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me.